The bases for Nakano's works are crafted by a trusted wood jointer. First, Nakano rubs raw lacquer into the wood to protect it from warping. A sturdy linen fabric is saturated with this adhesive. The fabric is then pasted onto the wood. The next task is to lay a foundation over the surface. Nakano mixes clay powder with water and raw lacquer to form a rough material that he spreads out with a cypress spatula. He gives two coats, polishing them down each time. From here, Nakano switches to a paste called sabi, made of raw lacquer and a finer clay powder. This he spreads over the earlier rougher layer to refine the surface. Once again he applies two coats, gradually perfecting the grain. He then sets the box aside for about six months while the lacquer hardens. Nakano begins applying the bottommost coat of the lacquer ground. He uses a high quality black lacquer called doido, which has no oil content. Nakano polishes the lacquer with charcoal made from the Japanese wood oil tree. For the middle coat, Nakano applies the roido lacquer a little more thickly than he did before. Through repeated polishing, the surface begins to take on a profound luster. He burns some lacquer to evaporate its water content making it less quick to harden. Nakano traces the design along the back of the paper. He lays the paper on the box lacquer side down. Rubbing on the paper, he then transfers the design onto the surface. The shell of the black lip pearl oyster will be used to represent wild grapes. This is one of the most involved and complicated techniques in all of Makie. First, Nakano mixes clay powder and lacquer to form sabi, the same material that was used earlier to prepare the surface of the box. This he spreads over the faces of the squirrels that appear in his design. After raising the squirrels and the grape leaves up to a uniform height and letting them harden, he adds more sabi to model subtle gradations. Ordinarily, charcoal powder is used to build up the finer details. Nakano, however, makes a special powder himself. The resulting powder is harder than charcoal. And because it does not smudge the lacquer surface, it is also easy to work with.
After burnishing the raised portions with charcoal to define their shape, Nakano then covers them with black goido lacquer. Next, Nakano brushes red lacquer onto the relief. This is in preparation for sprinkling on metal powder, the step that gives makie its name. For the squirrels, Nakano selects a gold powder of relatively large grain. Platinum powder is used for shadowing. Flattened flakes of gold express patterns of coloration on the squirrel's tails. The grape leaves are first dusted with dried and powdered yellow lacquer. Their centers are filled in with a reddish-black powder. The powders are firmly fixed with lacquer. This will be the final polishing before the surface coat of lacquer is applied. Nakano works carefully to ensure perfection in the subsequent final stages of the work. The entire box is now covered by a uniform coat of black roido lacquer. Nakano rubs down the lacquer finish with charcoal. The gold designs emerge once again. One characteristic of this style of raised makie is the smooth natural rise of the relief from the surface. Nakano painstakingly shapes the delicate contours. He erases fine scars by smoothing the surface with powdered feldspar and a paste of clay powder and rapeseed oil. Nakano filters raw lacquer and applies it over the entire surface of the box. Now he is ready to give the box its very last polish. He works the surface a little at a time with rapeseed oil and titanium powder, this time using his bare fingers and palms, as skin is more delicate than cotton or cloth. Inspired by the rounded form of a centuries-old masterpiece, Nakano's box, too, evinces gentle grace. Squirrels raised in subtle relief bask in the soft light of the sun, clutching grapes as they chatter back and forth. <laughs>